Now we're going to treat a right on left sacral torsion. The non-osteopathic term would be stuck back on the right. So we know that the cheat rules say that the stuck side faces the ceiling. What we have here is a situation where the sacrum is stuck back and I've got to get it to move forward. So on the cardboard, you're going to see that the ILA and the, and the sacral sulcus, if we palpate in the sacral sulcus, it's actually stuck backward. And it's on a left oblique axis. So what happens is sacrum spins this way. I've got to figure out a way to get the sacrum to go that way. So it's in this position. I've got to figure out a way to go that way. All right. On the skeleton, what we'll take a do is this sacral sulcus is stuck back. I've got to get it to move forward. All right. So I'm going to have the patient lie on their side so that the dysfunctional side is toward the ceiling. Okay. Our right side is the side we're working with. All right. We've got three barriers to take up. What I'm going to do is bring the top leg forward, the bottom leg backwards, so I can take up my extension barrier. All the time I'm palpating in the right sacral sulcus. Extension barrier back, off a little bit, there it is. I come up under the pillow and get the patient's shoulder that they're laying on, and I just very gently force them, and there's my barrier, and I back off. I then get my rotation barrier this way. I put the arm up in this position, I reach right by the elbow, and I slowly push down there on the shoulder, and there's my barrier, and I back off. The last thing I do is I join them up on the bed, move their knee up onto my knee, and I get I get my side bending barrier just by pulling that foot toward the ceiling. When I get my barrier, I tap the ankle and I have them pull it down toward the table. As they pull down to the table with one pound of pressure, I hold that for eight to ten seconds. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. Take a nice deep breath. Reset those spindles. And then I go back and reset all of my barriers. Now the patient has to be passive. The patient can't do anything. The therapist has to do everything or you're going to miss your barriers. So I take it back to extension and back off. Switch hands, come down here, extending from above down, extension and back off. Reach back in, rotation, there's my barrier, back off. Take the leg again, place it up on mine. Get my side bending barrier, there's my barrier. I tap them on the ankle, I say pull that ankle down toward the floor. One pound of pressure, and they hold that for eight to 10 seconds. Seven, eight, nine, 10, release. Nice deep breath. And then I retake up my barriers. Now I'll do that four to five times. So I've done that around the cycle there four to five times. There's an alternate treatment for this, and that's using the piriformis muscle directly to pull the sacrum forward. Because you know the piriformis muscle attaches directly to the anterior surface of the sacrum. So if I just straighten that leg out like so, and then raise the leg toward the ceiling, and if I do this all myself, the patient can't help. So I've got to raise that leg up toward the ceiling until I get my side bending barrier, and then I have the patient turn their toes toward the ceiling and take a pound of pressure only out of my hand. To do that, she has to engage the piriformis. When she does so, the piriformis muscle will assist pulling the sacrum in a forward direction. And she holds it for eight to 10 seconds. Eight, nine, 10, relax completely, and take a deep breath. And then I would put that leg down and take up all of my previous barriers just like I had done before, and do that uh, four to five times. Once I've done that, I line the patient over on their stomach again and check to see if I have corrected the right on left sacral torsion, which would be stuck back on the right, and check to see that it is now level and symmetrical.